you have learned how to graph. You've been knowing how to graph for forever, but if I gave you the coordinate uh, 2, 4, we'll just do something simple, you would go to the right 2 and you would go up 4. No big secret there. But this is what we call a coordinate plane, and it has basically rectangular coordinates. Everything is left or right, then up and down. So everything is rectangular. However, we're going to get into something called polar coordinates. And that's where it is more round than it is rectangular. Let me show you the practical application of it first. If we want to know the frequency response of this microphone, this microphone right here, here, got a microphone, I would, I would be able to tell from this equation and the way this is shaped where this microphone is going to pick up. If I speak into this microphone from this direction, it'll pick it up. If I speak in it from this direction, it won't. And I can tell because this side of the bubble is smaller. Also, if you are on a ship, then they have a radar that would basically go around like this, and you would be able to tell what else is around you, and it is polar coordinates. So let's just go ahead and jump straight into it. Polar coordinates are represented as r comma theta, and it's not that hard, trust me, you got this. So we're going to just plot each one of these, it's going to be really easy at first, we'll kind of discuss some stuff as we go through it. 2 comma pi over 3, so r is the radius, it's how far I go out, and I'm going to start by going out 2, and then I'm going to go around pi over 3, so I'm going to put it in red so it shows up, so over 2 and around pi over 3, and that right there is A. Okay, let's do the second one. 4 comma pi. I'm going to go to 4, and then I'm going to go around pi radians. So I'll swing around to here. And that is letter B. Real quick, I just want to talk about something. That is not the only location, that's not the only coordinate that will get us to that location. I'm going to scribble something here. If I was to tell you that we wanted to graph 4 comma negative pi, it would put us in the same place. See? We'd go out to 4, and then we'd go around to negative pi, and it would put us in the same location. Just wanted to throw that out there. Okay, let's graph C. 1.5 comma 5 pi over 6. So 1 and a half, and then we're going to go around 5 pi over 6 radians. So we stay on this little circle right here until we get to 5 pi over 6. 6. And that is C. I recommend that you pause it right here and try the other ones because you'll have to know how to graph these on your own. And uh, I'm going to continue to do this, but you should pause it, try it on your own, and then just kind of skip a couple minutes so you can make sure that you're right. But I'm going to keep explaining for those that need to see a little bit more. So three and a half comma two pi. So three and a half, here's three, there's three and a half, and we're going to go around two pi. Whoosh, boom puts us exactly where we had to start, where we were to start with, and that's the letter D. For what it matters, you don't have to write this, but for what it matters, this is equivalent to 3.5 comma zero. I could go out three and a half and then go around none at all. Puts me right back where I was, uh, was to start with. Okay, one half comma five pi over three. One half and then we're going to go around to 5 pi over 3. 5 pi over 3 is right here, so 1 half and then 5 pi over 3. It's kind of hard to see, but it's on that little line right there. And that is letter E. Then 2 and 3 pi over 2. 2. And then we go around. I'm looking at these numbers, the radian numbers. So 2 and then... 3 pi over 2. This is, again, it's incredibly practical when you're dealing with things like radar, frequency response, things like that. Okay. Well, how do we convert from polar to rectangular coordinates? Well, there are two formulas that you need to remember. And uh, one of them looks like this. Once you memorize this, you got it. Actually, I'm not going to write the formula. I'm going to write what leads us to the formula so you'll kind of understand where it comes from. So, uh, x equals and then y equals. Remember when we did the unit circle, which by the way you're going to need to have that handy in just a minute, but remember when we did the unit circle and it was uh, cosine comma sine, x then y. So x is cosine, I'll leave a little space in the front, and then y is sine, and obviously it's not just sine or cosine, it's cosine of theta and sine of theta. Now 
there's a little bit more because it's not just cosine of theta and sine of theta. When we were dealing with the unit circle, we had a radius of 1. That was convenient. So this was 1 times cosine theta and 1 times sine of theta. Well, now it's not 1 anymore. It's going to be whatever the radius is. So it's the radius times cosine theta and the radius times sine theta. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to convert each of the ones that we did up above into rectangular coordinates. What do you mean by rectangular coordinates, Mr. Reader? Glad you asked. These. These. So what I'm really asking is this. If I was to plot this point on polar coordinates, which ends up there, then where would it land on rectangular coordinates? How would I be able to say, well, over 2 and around pi over 3, and how can I take that and turn it into over 2 and up whatever or around whatever, or, you know, and, and it's probably not even, probably doesn't even start with a 2. So my question again is, where is A on here? Now, it looks like they're in about the same place with this random dot that I picked, but they're not. So this is how we're going to convert it. So let's start by doing letter A. I gave you plenty of space down here. Actually, it's not enough space. I'm going to use a separate piece of paper for this in a minute. Um, I'm going to start by writing it. 2 comma pi over 3. This is where the unit circle comes in handy, which is why you need to have it memorized or at least be able to, to write down the pieces of it that you need. So I know that R is 2 and theta is pi over 3. So we're going to find x and we're going to find y. So x is r cosine theta. I'm writing a little bit of unnecessary stuff here, but it's going to be 2 times the cosine of pi over 3. And I'm going to find out what that is. Well, I find out what the cosine of pi over 3 is by doing the same stuff I've been doing. Cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. So what I really have is 2 times 1 half, which is really 1. And then y equals r sine of theta. So it's 2 times the sine of pi over 3. Well, I need to find out what the sine of pi over 3 is. So I use the unit circle that you have memorized, I hope. And uh, the sine of pi over 3 is this, square root of 3 over 2. So we have 2 times square root of 3 over 2. Those cancel, and it leaves me with the square root of 3. Here's the final answer. This polar coordinate, the out and around, is the same as this rectangular coordinate, 1 comma square root of 3. So if I was to treat this, uh, this plane up here, this polar plane, as if it was rectangular, I'd go out 1 and up the square root of 3, and it would put me in that exact same location. Okay, let's do B. r is 4, theta is pi. So r is 4, theta is pi. I'm going to write a little bit less this time. x is equal to r cosine theta, and y is equal to r sine theta. And the cosine of pi is negative 1. So we have 4 times negative 1. That came off the unit circle. That's negative 4. For sine of theta is 4 times, well, sine of theta is 0. Sine of, sorry, sine of pi is 0. That gives me 0. So my coordinate is negative 4 comma 0. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you, some of them, particularly the ones that land on an axis, are pretty obvious. If I wanted to know the coordinates right here, then I'd go back 4 and up and down 0. So that one was a little bit obvious. Okay, I'm going to get a separate piece of paper and do C, D, E, and F. I recommend that you try them on your own. You don't have to have my help for this. So if you would like to mute the video and kind of just watch if you're lost, that's fine. I'm going to continue to explain, but feel free to pause it, skip it, do whatever you need to do. But try them on your own because you're going to have to do them on your own in a few minutes anyway. Here's C. 1.5 comma 5 pi over 6. So x equals 1.5 cosine of 5 pi over 6. We'll figure that out. y is 1.5 sine of 5 pi over 6. And we're just going to plug that stuff in. So 
1.5, the cosine of 5 pi over 6 is negative square root of 3 over 2. The sine of 5 pi over 6 is 1 half. Okay. Well, now we have a mess. I, I don't want decimals. Let's not have decimals, okay? De decimals aren't what we need here. We need actual, for real, legit, don't round it off, square roots. So we're going to find out what this is by doing 1.5 divided by 2. And um, you know what that is. It's 3 quarters, so 0.75. But it's negative 3 quarters. And there is a square root of 3 involved. One point five times a half. Well, one and a half times a half. That's the same thing we just did, actually. Um, half of one and a half is three quarters. And so the answer for C, the coordinate for C in rectangular form, would be negative three square root of three over four, and three over four. Okay. Here comes D. Three point five comma two pi. Can I cheat? Do you mind? I'm not cheating, actually. I'm finding a shortcut. 3.5 comma 2 pi. Don't waste your time with the formula, folks. There it is. There's the coordinate D right there. 3.5, and then it went all the way around, ended up exactly where it was, on the axis. If it's on the axis, it's really easy to tell. So the final answer for this one in rectangular form is going to be 3.5 comma 0. And it looks exactly the same as our rewrite that we did up there. So this one is polar. This one is rectangular. Okay, E. 0 0.5 comma 5 pi over 3. R. Cosine, I don't even know why I started writing R. I'm just going to put X equals... <laughs> So, x equals that, cosine 5 pi over 3. We find out what the cosine of 5 pi over 3 is. It's a half. So we have 0.5 times a half. That's a fourth. And then we have 0.5 sine of 5 pi over 3. That's 0.5 times negative square root of 3 over 2. So we're going to take a half and multiply it by that. Let's kind of ignore the square root for a second. It's negative something. That's a half times a half. It's a fourth. And that's still hanging around on the top. Final answer, 1 fourth comma negative square root of 3 over 4. Letter F. 2 comma, oh man, that's not a comma, that's a parenthesis. Forgot my punctuation. 2 comma, 3 pi over 2. All right, so the x coordinate is 2 cosine 3 pi over 2. The y coordinate is 2 sine 3 pi over 2. This is one that's on the axis, so it's actually pretty easy, but we're going to continue with it this method anyway. So 2 times the cosine of 3 pi over 2, that's 0. 2 times 0 is 0. That is negative 2, so we have this. So the answer is 0, negative 2. There we go. Now you can see it. You couldn't see it a second ago. All right, well, we're going to continue with this idea, and now we're going to convert some equations. So here goes. Converting some equations. Suppose you wanted to convert from a rectangular function to a polar function. Well, I can graph that. I know what the graph of that looks like. Let me show you. I mean, you know what it looks like, but just for a visual, here we go. I'm going to turn my scatter plot off. Three, zoom, six. There we go. There it is. It's a line. It, it's a horizontal line. It goes through three. Okay, so y equals three. Well, considering, I'm going to write it at the top for reference, that x equals r cosine theta and that y equals r sine theta, we can manipulate this equation into a 
polar equation. And I'm going to show you what all that means in a minute. But first, let's just go ahead and turn that y into this. So what we really have is not y anymore, but we have r sine theta equals 3. Okay, what do we do with that? Here's what we do with that. We want to solve for r. On every one of these, if possible, we want to solve for r. And that makes it pretty easy because all we have to do is divide by the sine of theta. Divide by the sine of theta. And r equals 3 over sine theta. Let me show you something. It's really neat. You can follow along on your calculator. I recommend you do, actually, because you're going to need to know how to do this. Um, instead of graphing in function mode, which is rectangular coordinates, we're going to switch mode. So press mode, and we're going to switch it from function to polar. See that right there? And now when we hit y equals, it's not y equals, it's r equals. Oh, one more thing. Let's, need, let's uh, put it in radians. So press mode. Make sure you're in radians and not degrees. Normally we're in degrees for stuff, but now we're in radians. Anytime you graph with trig, you need to be in radians, pretty much. Um, almost any time. So we go back to y equals, which is now r equals, and we're going to put 3 divided by sine of theta. Here's your theta. See where my finger is right there at the bottom of the screen? It's the same button you use for x. It's x, t, theta, n. Yeah, it's all that. Close those parentheses. And if you press graph, there it is. Same graph. Kind of graphed it backwards from the way we just did it, but it's the exact same graph. So there it is. Let's keep going. We're going to finish every one of these on this page, and then you'll have some work to do to kind of practice these skills. All right, the next one is almost the exact same idea. We're going to take x out and plug that in its place. So r cosine theta equals negative 1. We're going to divide by cosine theta, and r equals negative 1 over cosine theta. Do I need to graph that to make sure it's right? No, you don't have to. If you wanted to, you could. Negative 1 divided by cosine of theta. There it is, vertical line. There it is. Okay, let's keep going. The third one. Y equals X squared. This one's going to be kind of a beast. I know what that graph looks like, by the way. I know that from math one. I know it looks like this. It's a parabola. It sits at the origin, opens up standard width. Now let's change a few things. Y is R sine theta, so R sine theta equals, and then X squared, so R cosine theta, and all that is squared. All of it's squared. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to square the R and the cosine, so we still have this on this side. We have R squared cosine squared theta, and we're trying to get R all by itself. Well, I have a brilliant idea. Let's divide by r. It cancels these, and it gives me sine of theta on this side, and on this side it cancels that with one of those and gives me r cosine squared theta. And we're going to divide by cosine squared theta. And we are left with r equals sine theta over cosine squared theta. And if you wanted to graph that in your calculator, you could, just to make sure that it's correct. I'm going to, because I want to show you how to type this kind of thing. So y equals, let's clear that out. So sine theta, no big deal there, divided by, now we're going to have to square the cosine, and when you do, you need to put the entire thing in parentheses. So we're going to put parentheses, and then cosine theta, and then we're going to close those parentheses, and then we're going to square the whole thing. You can't put the cosine there in the calculator. For some reason, it just doesn't jive like that. But there it is. There's your parabola. Isn't that neat? Okay, three more. Let's keep going. Uh, what we're going to do on this one is same thing we've been doing. We're going to put r sine theta equals one-half r cosine theta, and that is equal to 5. And this one turns into a mess. Linear ones can kind of get messy if you're not careful. Here's what we need to do. We need to get r by itself. Don't divide by r. We have two terms with an r in them. Let's move them to the same side. So we have r sine theta minus 1 half r cosine theta equals 5. I don't think there's anybody that's lost on this one yet. Both of these terms have an r. Essentially, they have a greatest common factor of r, so divide it out. 
or factor it out. Sine theta minus 1 half cosine theta, and that's equal to 5. Well, if you want to get r by itself, you'll just divide. So sine theta minus 1 half cosine theta, and you'll do the same thing here. Sine theta minus 1 half cosine theta. Those cancel. I'm not going to write all that again. There's your final answer. R equals that. Okay, next. 3. R cosine theta minus 4. R sine theta equals 8. We want to get R by itself. We're in the same position we were here where we were on this line right there. We need to factor out an R. So factor out the R. 3 cosine theta minus 4 sine theta equals 8. And we need to get R by itself, so we're going to divide by all that mess. I'm going to just kind of skip it and jump straight to the answer. 3 cosine theta minus 4 sine theta. And if I type that in the calculator, I just want to show you really quickly, just so you'll know how to do it. 8 divided by, then put the entire denominator in parentheses. 3 cosine theta minus 4 sine theta. And then we're going to close out the entire denominator. And we know this is a line. It has a slope of 3 fourths and a y-intercept of negative 2. And sure enough, there it goes. Isn't that neat? Okay, last one. This one's weird. This one's kind of weird. Um, x squared plus y squared equals 25. Cool. We got r cosine theta. It's all squared. Plus r sine theta. It's all squared. And that's equal to 25. Let's go ahead and do the obvious. r squared cosine squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta equals 25. We want to get r by itself, so let's factor out the r squared. No, you can't square root it. That would be illegal because of that plus sign. So r squared, and then you have cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 25. Okay, now what? Now, you might be tempted to divide by that. Don't. Don't. What, what is that? You know this. What's cosine squared plus sine squared? It's 1. All that mess right there is equal to 1. So it's r squared times 1. r squared equals 25. We'll now square root it. So r equals 5. There's no need to put a plus and minus in this. By the way, this is the equation of a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 5. And we've been through this before. So if I just put r equals 5 and I graphed it, there it is. There's your circle. Now, it looks like an ellipse, but it's not because... It, it, the screen is wider than it is tall, but the radius is indeed 5. So 5 this way and 5 that way, 5 that way, and 5 that way. 